Okay, back to Heroes vs. Villains, Round 8. So, we start off with Tarzan vs. Claudandis and Sharptooth. So, we see uh, Claudandis is back with Scar's faction, and he gives him a copy that he got from Ox's computer to hypnotize Sharptooth. How can the network work in the Pride Lands if there's no internet connection? Or if there's hardly any? Well, I guess it's some sort of supercomputer um, that Mog has, so I guess it doesn't have that any internet connections, I guess. And now they're going to use it to attack Tarzan and his whole family, along with his friends. Claudan has arrived. Yeah, I guess they just, they should not underestimate Claudan, because he may be an old house cat, but he's got brains. Yeah, and everyone's like, oh my crap, a T-Rex! I, I, I... Okay, that's a good editing with the T-Rex from Tarzan that makes it like a sharp tooth that's trying to eat the professor. I like Tarzan fighting sharp tooth much better than Simba versus sharp tooth. I'm just saying, because I like how he's... You know, he is an ape man. He can fly the... He can slide on sharp tooth like on the Flintstones, like yeah, but damn it, you! Oh, what's that pretty cat? Ooch! Aha! Uh -huh. What sharp tooth with a tree branch on the nose? Oh, there's Tentor to the rescue and. Either Shark Tooth just lost balance when he got knocked over by Tantor, or did Tantor just hit him in the? Nah, I'm not not mentioning any part of the time. That's not, no, 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 no. Too nasty to think that. I mean, that would have hurt. And now they're all running away. Well, Tarzan and his friends, allies, win. Next fight is uh, Anastasia versus Lady Tremaine. Well, Rasputin offers Lady Tremaine the wand of the fairy godmother after he turned her to stone. And he tasks her to kidnap Anastasia for her. And there's two Anastasia. One from Cinderella, that is the step bleh, the stepsister. And the other one is the one of the, mis the last members of the Romanov family. She's not really a princess, well, technically, but she's a duchess. Hey, what are y'all tearing her dress for? Huh, I guess there are times, well, you can never hit a lady, but there are times where you can punch those who are a-holes. You know, like they Tremaine, for example. Oh, and they capture her, and they're disappearing. Lady Tremaine wins. The next fight is Buzz Lightyear versus Icon. Buzz Lightyear, along with his uh, Star Command team, are trying to find uh, something, you know, finding some information about Zerg's plans. Until they run into Zygon. Even though I have, I still, yeah, it's, I know that Star Chaser, The Legend of Auron, is a Star Wars ripoff. But I am having it as one of my collections of DVDs to collect. Huh. Miranova possessed that robot to make it commit suicide. Huh. I mean, it's a bit dark, don't you think? I mean, very dark. Run away! Run away! Monty Python reference. Run away! Run away! And they're getting out of here! Okay. And now for the epilogue. So we see Jim, along with Morph, are sweeping the deck. You know. Mopping the poop deck. And then we see Silver is throwing some garbage. Well, I just hope no one who's driving their uh, spacecraft are getting hit by the garbage. Like, seriously? I just bought my new space car! Imagine that one like that. But... Hold on. Okay, that, that music is from Kingdom Hearts 358 Days. It's the one with Neverland and theme in it. Yeah, Jim is thinking Mulan for, uh... 
helping him, you know, with Scroob and Preet situation. Me thinks there's a shipping going on. Could that be the reason CK had Mulan with Jim? Okay, now we see, um... Hold on. We see Colin from Highlander, the anime movie, which I still have not seen yet. That's where Marcus Octavius is from. I still gotta get it. And there's Julie, uh, meet up with the Atlantean team. Kind of an odd team up. You got Highlander, which is like a, an apocalyptic story. You know, a dystopian film, something like that. Atlantis, which is like, you know, science fiction with... Well, hello! Science fiction movie, which just takes place in, you know, Atlantis, which is about Atlantis, sort of. And Julie, which is like, should have been one of the space heroes team instead. Then we see Aladdin and Moses, along with their team, meet up with Odette and her friends, Gurgi and Rocco and Hubie and Rocco. Telling them about Ramesses and Frollo capturing prisoners. Okay, if you see, like, if you, if, ah, if someone tells you that this is the, the official alliance, I mean, if you, okay, let me try this again. If you want to say that, hey, this is the official alliance, if you made your own alliance kind of like this, people will probably think you're on high. Because you got the street rat, the prophet of God, the famous cartoon icon, penguins, a swan, a turtle, and a puffin, and a frog, anthropomorphic humanoid people. Yeah, people will definitely say you're pretty on high. Then we see McLeach is going to hunt down Littlefoot and his friends, and he spots them. I didn't make it all the way through third grade, for nothing. This is the first time a poacher will hunt down these prehistoric animals. I mean, if prehistoric animals were to still exist today, imagine there'd be poachers going around. Then we see that the Horn King and his forces get a surprise visit from... Who would be surprised? He'd be the traitor. So he tells them that the Black Cauldron is in King Stefan's castle. So I guess the Horn King asks Clavius to show them the proof that he is telling the truth. Using the genie and the crystal ball to locate it, and yes, King Haggard's right. It's in King Stefan's castle. Hold on. Yep. And now they're going to go after it. To attack King Stephen and the Royal Council. Yikes! Yeesh. And then in space, we see the arrival of the Dredge Empire. Or just the Dredge. Okay, that was Heroes vs. Villains Round 8. It was pretty good. See you guys in the next video.